Morning by Julie Sharp, Part 7. I'm not often out so early. I've got my warm robe on, the blue one with the scarlet threads on the hem. He liked it. I've always liked it for cold days. My arms are safe up the long sleeves. I've got the myrrh in my hands. Mary and Susanna have the other herbs and some spices. There was one day when Mary took a whole jar of nard this is perfume of which most of us only dream. The kind of fragrance passed down as wealth. Kings desire it for their wives, their lovers. I've heard that David knew of it. Solomon stored it. The smell is rich and heavy. I've smelt it only once, like being in an old garden full of rose and lily, and something underneath, some note of pine and rosemary even musk. We don't know how Mary had so much. We don't talk of her past, since my son gave her a new beginning. Go and sin no more, he said to her that day, when he saved her from judgment. And she's been new since. She was restored to her brother and sister, and for the most part kept quietly indoors, so as not to shame them more than she already had. These last months, though, she's often been with my son. To others, to Judas, for instance, that extravagant moment of pouring out made no sense. What could have been done with the money if the perfume had been sold? What good could have been done? Another 5,000 fed? More sick brought to comfort? More broken brought to peace? But Jesus never worked like that. His was the most generous heart in all the world. But he never bought anything to be a gift. He always gave from within. His extravagant spending was of himself. Perhaps Mary meant to do the same, meant to show that she understood meant to pour out herself as perfume, whatever anyone watching might say, trusting Jesus to see what was true, to see the gift as it really was. I think she must think of it often. They say he said, even then, that she was preparing his body for burial. How strange that we'll be going together now to prepare him anew. Oh, it's still dark. The air is cold on my face. We scarcely speak. This is a woman's task, but not a task a woman should ever have to do for her son. Every small task of intimacy a woman does for her son is done gladly. This is only pain. The other Joseph was there after the dying, and he helped to take my boy down with his own hands. The guards were for leaving him, as was the custom, but the Passover was coming and perhaps the priests wanted the place clean of all that ritual corruption. Their corruption is like a stench of rotting corpses. They wouldn't see the truth before their eyes. They couldn't bear to hear his questions, to see his healings, to look him in the face. They couldn't bear him. I know when he was brought before them, one of them spat at him, and they were glad to send him for humiliation to Pilate and to Herod, so that he could be made to suffer without them becoming ritually unclean. If I could laugh at this, I would. They destroyed the one true servant, they are condemned by their own mouths again and again. 
Joseph was different. He went to Pilate without them knowing, and he asked for the body. He had had a tomb prepared for himself in the green hill garden, and that is where they took Jesus. He was folded gently after all that agony, folded in a soft white grave cloth, and a cloth wound round his head. I'll never forget the moment till I die, when he was placed into my arms before they washed him and wrapped him in white. The long, dead, cold weight of him. I couldn't really hold him, but for a moment or two I didn't want anyone else to touch him except me. I was like that when he was born. He was taken from my body and placed in my arms, and I couldn't let go of him. He was mine, and no other hands could, for those moments, embrace him. No child's breath on my face at this moment. No breath. No life. No stirring. He was empty flesh at last, he who'd been so alive. And I held him and held him, until they took him from me and wrapped him gently and carried him away to the garden tomb where the borrowed grave waited to receive him. And that's where we're going now.